The musical instruments we play today are a culmination of hundreds of years of development over time. But what drives these changes? Musicians, instrument makers, and composers are constantly pushing the limits of what instruments can do. Whether it's being able to play loudly, better in tune, or being able to play as many pitches as possible. These are some of the factors that have influenced instrument design. To explore this development, let's look at members of the brass family, and in particular, the trumpet. The family an instrument belongs to is determined by how the sound is produced, rather than the material it's made of, which can be misleading. In the case of brass instruments, sound is produced by the player buzzing their lips, usually into a mouthpiece. In fact, any object where the player buzzes their lips to make the sound is a brass instrument. This includes some of the oldest known examples of brass instruments, which were crafted from animal horns, bones, and conch shells. Some of our earliest brass instruments on display are what we call natural instruments, like these natural trumpets made in London in the mid-18th century. Notice the design. It's just a long brass tube with a mouthpiece at one end and a bell on the other. To play the instrument, the player buzzes their lips into the mouthpiece and, to change the pitch, they alter how fast their lips are vibrating. A natural trumpet has no mechanism to help the player change the pitch, so it is completely up to the skill of the player. Also, because the player cannot make the instrument longer or shorter, the natural trumpet can only play in one key, and there are large gaps between the notes. This is what we call the harmonic series. This is how trumpets were made and played for around 300 years. Although there is beautiful music written for the natural trumpet, they were very difficult to master and didn't play all the notes, so makers were looking for a way to modify the design. In the late 18th century, trumpet makers borrowed a concept from woodwind instruments, keys. They added keys which opened and closed holes along the body. This changed the sounding length, so the key trumpet allowed a player to play a full chromatic scale. Think of the white and black keys on the piano. That's the chromatic scale. This opened up many possibilities to composers, such as Haydn, who wrote music for this newly designed and more versatile trumpet. Keys were then added to all sorts of brass instruments, including bugles, which became a popular amateur instrument and allowed amateur bands to form, such as the brass band. Although the keyed trumpet was a huge step forward, it still had limitations. Because the player was opening and closing holes on the instrument, the sound quality was very uneven, and keyed trumpets were not easy to play in tune. The key was an important development, but there was still room for further modification. The next step in the trumpet's development is arguably the most important the invention of the valve. The first valved instruments were made by Heinrich David Stolzel in 1818, and they were initially used on the horn. The valve is a type of piston that redirects the airstream into different lengths of tubing. By lengthening the instrument, the player was able to play all the notes, and with the valve, they could do this with a clear and even sound. Once the valve was incorporated into brass instrument design, the variety, shape, and size of brass instruments grew more than ever before. And you can see the innovation of design in our brass display in the Wolfson Gallery. Over the last century, many of these newly designed instruments fell out of fashion, but the trumpet is here to stay.